G'day, Dylan from The Byron Bay Observatory here. Look, I know you've seen the title and you're thinking, what are you talking about? Boo hoo, Mr. Observatory Man. <laughs> and I get that, having an observatory is great. But if you don't have an observatory, if you're one of those people who actually knows how to set up their equipment from night to night, you can polar align like a ninja in the dark. You actually level and configure and focus and do everything manually at first before the automation kicks in. You guys are the hardcore astronomers of the group, not like us lazy observatory people. But if you're one of those people, then you're gonna enjoy this video because it'll give you something to at least know that uh, it's not all sunshine and rainbows on the observatory. And if you do have an observatory, then you know exactly where I'm coming from and you might pick up a few things in this video too. So stick around, my name is Dylan Adon and you're watching Star Stuff. Let's address the elephant in the room. It's been four weeks since my last confession, but I've been doing stuff. I've been doing space. I've been doing space all night long. I mean, look at these galaxies. I think that this is the longest integration time I've ever done. The antenna galaxies, interacting galaxies. And here's a little happy snap I took of M42 Orion. Nice and deep there in the trapezium, nice and deep. And a wide field shot of the Colsac Nebula and Carina. And this shot I found on a hard drive I never posted before. I've been doing space. I've been doing it for myself, just not filming it and stuff and uh, really getting into it just, just for myself, just me and the telescope, not for social media, not for any monetary gain. So uh, shout out to High Point Scientific, the sponsor of this video. High Point Scientific don't sell observatories but they do sell basically everything you'd want to stick into observatory. Do you want my guide camera? High Point Scientific. Do you want my telescope? High Point Scientific. Do you want my focuser? High Point Scientific. They've got everything and they'll price match guarantee with their competitors. I mean, you can replicate my setup using the links in the description or you can just build whatever you want. If you're a reflector girl, you can set up whatever you want. If you're a refractor guy, you can set up whatever you want. If you're a visual astronomer, you can set up whatever you want. They have what you need right there. Links in the description or just go to www.highpointscientific.com. I mean, the observatory is inherently outside all the time. I'm pretty sure that's rat poo. Uh, you are going to get all sorts of bugs, small animals. If you've been with me for a while, you know we have snakes, birds, lizards, all sorts of stuff around here. And they do mess up your stuff, so you've got to sort of clean it out now and then. Worst case scenario, they'll shit on your telescope. And of course, we're outside. You are at the mercy of the elements. Uh, as you know, I've had some trouble with Skyshed Pod initially. Uh, we had lots of ingress with all sorts of weather. Next Stone version 1 had trouble as well. And next stone version 2 still has a small lip, but it's fine. Uh, I've had no problems with the, with the weatherproofing on this one. You do still have to be a little bit concerned about the humidity in the observatory, uh, which is why there's a dehumidifier running all the time. And worst case scenario, you want to make sure that everything's bolted down correctly because if there is a tornado or something... That is absolutely cute! Like you see on the news reports when uh, cars and trampolines are thrown around in the weather. So just be careful of that. But uh, for the most part, this uh, Next Dome version 2 design has been really, really good. Oh no, a storm. Close. Mm -hmm. up 
any sort of observatory, whether it's a dome or roller roof or whatever, uh, there's a bit of configuration involved. You do have to integrate that with your acquisition software. If, if you do have a dome with an aperture like this, you need to make sure the dome geometry is correct or the configuration in the different types of software. And some of that uh, support is embryonic in some of the software. Uh, there are programs that don't have dome support at all. So there's a bit of a barrier to entry in that you do have to get things set up a little bit more complicated than you do if you're just outside under the stars in a field. Now, dome geometry itself is fairly straightforward. You want the aperture to match. So whenever this telescope moves, this moves around with it. But that's sometimes easier said than done. It took me a while to really nail it, particularly for this setup. Uh, I have other videos where I explain the dome geometry a bit better. But the problems that you'll face are, say for example, you have a, another telescope on the top here. And then this telescope is going this way. Uh, you want that you want the opening to then match, but then the opening sometimes isn't wide enough for this scope and the scope on top of it. That's the issue that I had with the Rasa setup. And what happens if you want to dual saddle this and have two telescopes side by side? Then all of a sudden, this aperture maybe isn't wide enough at all. So there are some issues to sort out with your particular rig. And if the aperture is even big enough at all to do what you want it to do. If it is big enough, that's good, but then you need to make sure it chases it really precisely so that as it moves and follows the scope, there isn't like a lip that is going to cut off the image or cause any sort of vignetting at all. Observatories and domes and even telescopes and mounts and stuff, they're inherently mechanical things. Some dudes are mechanical. Uh, I am not one of those dudes. I'm, I'm pretty good with software. I'm not so good with hardware. I hate screws and knobs and little things to tweak that stuff drives me insane for some people that's like the highlight of the hobby for them they love diy they love shimmying stuff they love 3d printing stuff not me drives me bananas uh, so all of this sort of stuff really irks me and for a long time uh, for instance this didn't rotate properly because it would fall out of the gears and it took me an idiot so long and in fact diego sold it for me all I had to do was push this wall out a bit. Once I'd done that, everything was fine. The gears engaged properly. I know, I'm an idiot. Anyway, that's not the only hardware story. There's little things like, uh, I'll show you this one. Uh, the other night, focus just stopped working and I did not know what was going on. I was inside at the time, enjoying a nice glass of wine and focus just would not nail ever. Uh, what it turned out to be was that this screw here had come loose and had fallen somewhere into all of this bullshit. Um, so you can imagine, here I am in the dark, trying to figure out what's going on. I have no idea that this has fallen out because I was inside, not next to my scope, like many astronomers. Uh, and I somehow figured out what had happened and then searched in the dark with my camera phone in here and found the screw in the cracks and then eventually managed to fix it. But that's something that took hours and probably would have taken minutes if I'd actually been sitting with my telescope. This is the data cabinet for the observatory. Uh, now, obviously with astronomy, we're dealing with large files and many people are tempted just to use their home Wi-Fi to connect to the observatory. Again, doesn't matter if you're talking about a dome or roll off roof or anything, uh, you need internet connection in the observatory. And for mine, I'm lucky I had this wired up properly. Ethernet is great, cable is stable. <laughs> Wi-Fi is a pain in the butt, but sometimes you need Wi-Fi. If I'm out here controlling stuff with my phone or an iPad or something, I need a stable Wi-Fi connection. So then you have to start thinking about uh, repeaters and extenders and Wi-Fi signal boosters. It gets a little bit complex. <laughs> With the uh, humidity, of course, comes uh, mold. So, I don't know, maybe you could treat this with chemicals or you just come out and clean it every now and then. It doesn't look very nice, but uh, it doesn't really affect anything, so I don't really care. It's not just humidity, it's the overall temperature and weather, not just outside the observatory, but inside the observatory. Uh, the temperature in summer here, it's like a greenhouse. So this thing heats up amazingly i'm actually impressed that all the telescope and mount and generally the pc has survived the australian summer inside this thing 
On a hot day though, I will come out and just vent things because I, I want that airflow to move through and I want to just take the edge off the, those high temperatures. This seems obvious, but the dome is a fixed position. Sometimes there are things that I want to photograph which are literally there, due west, and comets and stuff like that. Yeah, sometimes there's a comet like right there and I just can't see it. Uh, if you're a portable astronomer, you can just pick up your stuff and move somewhere else. Uh, I don't have that luxury. I have to wait, like Arecibo, I've just got to wait for things to be directly above me and then it all works. That's really annoying sometimes. There's another technique which I don't have access to and that's free balling. So sometimes international space station photographers will want to free ball their uh, scope here like this and move it around so that you can use the finder scope to visually track the international space station and follow it round as it goes so that you can hopefully get it in that video on your camera. Now I can do that technically physically with my telescope but once I unlock the clutches there is no encoding going on the dome is not going to follow the scope and even if it could the dome's just a little bit slow for the speed that it's transiting. I doubt that it would keep up. Maybe it would, but uh, it, it can't anyway because the dome isn't tracking once you release those clutches. So I can't freeball the International Space Station. Not like this. Now, being a lazy astronomy man, I like to be in here relaxing, drinking wine, and just doing stuff from here and watching the World Chess Championship or whatever. Uh, but sometimes, every now and then, things will go wrong. I, whether it's software, whether it's hardware, uh, something will glitch in the observatory. I don't know how the really remote guys deal with it, maybe with relays and remote uh, support technicians and stuff. But sometimes you just need to go outside and you actually have to get up off your ass and go unplug a cable and replug a cable. And maybe that's the only thing that you needed to do for things to start working again. Uh, it's tragic, but sometimes that happens. And it's really annoying. Oh yeah, cry me a river. But this is the sort of thing that can undo a whole night unless you can actually get to your observatory. Sometimes it'll be like a driver glitches and when that driver is something like the shutter, it can be a real problem. There have been nights where the driver itself has failed and then I haven't been able to close the shutter. In that case, I need to come outside and physically close the shutter myself. Uh, the other issue I had that was sort of software related, the dome geometry didn't home itself properly so that when this closed, these weren't lined up properly so it didn't charge the battery overnight. Then the next night I go out, that battery died. Then it takes a couple of days to get the new battery, install the new battery, so it can kind of wipe out a few nights work. I do sort of babysit the battery now a little, so when this is closed, I'll watch the voltage and make sure that it's charging uh, before I give up for the night. Uh, I want to make sure that that's aligned and charging correctly. Uh, however, I have done this. I felt compelled to draw a little arrow on the dome roof and the walls, just so that I know that it is at home properly, even visually outside when I'm looking at it. That way I can always know that even if someone's come along and just bumped this, that it hasn't removed that alignment and stopped that battery from charging. The big one. Do you know what is the worst thing about owning an observatory? I'll tell you. Absolutely nothing. It's Fucking awesome. Having the observatory is the best thing I've ever done. I can't believe you guys still set up in the dark, night after night. It's, it's just ridiculous. You know what makes a good astro photo? I can tell you what it's not. It's not effort. Effort does not make your astro photo better at all. Just because you're working harder doesn't mean your photo is going to be better. Not necessarily. Anyway, I love the observatory. I love the Next Dome. So thank you to Next Dome. Thank you to Sidereal Trading who set it up initially and Diego and his team there. Amazing. I love having an observatory. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Observatory life is the life. I love it. Thank you for watching. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs>